So in order to install your printer potty on the XP950, we're gonna to have to take a few screws out and also remove uh, a couple of panels. So we're gonna show you how to do that. Now, there are two screws. One is located here, and the other one is located just here. So we're gonna remove those now. Find a safe place to put that one. And remove the other one just here. And again, safe place. Now, in order to remove this cover or this strip, what I recommend you do is there is a little thing here. If you push against that, the whole thing clips up and comes away like so. So again, find somewhere safe for that. Now, this gives you access to two screws. The first one is here, just here. So we're gonna remove that. It's in a little bit tight. Remove that screw. That is a silver screw because it's internal and hidden. There is also another screw. It is located down here in this part of the printer. So um, having a magnetic tip screwdriver is a really good idea because then you can actually fish bits out or having like a magnet on, a, on an extender rod, something along those lines. So we're just gonna remove that screw now. And as it comes loose, as you can see, magnetic tip picks it up and removes it for us. So again, find for a safe place. This will then allow us to remove this panel just here. So all we do is just tip it forward and it'll come away. You'll notice there's a couple of little tabs here at the bottom. Those will be useful for seating the panel when we go to put it back in. Now we have access to the waste tubes. Right, you can see the waste tube running from the top here all the way down in a curve. That is the waste tube just there that we're going to uh, splice into. Rather than trying to disconnect that from the top there, what we're actually gonna do in this installation is actually cut it at the appropriate point, and then we'll be able to fit our extension waste tube. Um, it's just easier. This is the waste tube right here. The one that we mentioned is down there. We can get hold of it here. Lifting this up a little bit, if you want to stick a screwdriver in between so it doesn't pinch anything. And then what you're then going to be doing soon is but one key thing, don't yank, don't yank everything this way because you'll disconnect it from this end. Not good. Uh, where the pump is and stuff, you just pull down from the top here and down. You will need to create a hole in the plastic cover. Um, we generally recommend putting it in the bottom one because that's the one that's stable. So you need a, a little notch big enough for this piece here to exit having plugged into the waste tube there. So as a general rule, what I'd recommend is I'm gonna use some snips that we've got quite handy for this. Um, so I'm gonna make a hole just past this metal bit here use a hacksaw blade if you like or something similar it doesn't need to be a particularly big hole as you can see I've created two little bits there I'm just going to use these needle nose needle nose pliers to just ever so gently bend that little bit of plastic down and out of the way a little bit more of it file around that hole a little bit just to make sure you've got nothing too sharp the idea is just to make sure that nothing is going to cut your bit of tubing while it's plugged into the waste and everything else. So once you've done that, you now need to cut your piece of tubing so that you can install 
Actually, hold on one second. Let me get this right. Right, okay. Cut that side. That way it won't pop into there. Right, I'm going to give it a little bit of extra room. And then I'm going to cut the waste tube just here. This piece of tube here goes up, over, and down over the waste pads. You can use the little plug that comes with your kit, or you can ignore it completely. Um, there's very little ink left in that anyway. Nothing else is going to go in there because everything comes from the back to the front on an XP 950, 960. So now you can fairly safely get about that bit. I'm just going to put that in there again just to stop it from pinching down. And with my little forceps here, I'm just going to plug that in. Now that's gone in really easily, which makes me think it would pop out really easily. So the thing to do now is to get a cotton bud, a nice dirty one that I happen to have here, and just swap inside of that tube. Popped it in, giving it a quick spin, and then pull it out, and then pop that back in to it. Now that, coupled with positioning, so push that back a little bit, is now good solid position where that will hold that firmly in place and it shouldn't pop off. If you have any doubts at all about how well that is going to hold, a little nylon tie or similar wrapped around that and pulled really really tight should hold it in position and then push it out like so. So that is most of it done. Now that we've done that part, all we need to do now is start putting panels back on. So this one, that goes little tabs at the bottom here. They seat themselves in towards the bottom. There's a couple of slots, you can't really see them very well, but they are there. So that goes down there. Now remember, again, these are both silver for this. So first one is secure this one here. Once you've done that one, there is still a screw hole just there. We had before, if you remember this one, I'll just show you again. That goes down the bottom, just down in there. Okay, so this is where a magnetic screwdriver tip comes in very, very handy. Okay, it'll probably drop off. Take your time. Don't panic if you drop the screw into there. There isn't really anything major. You might want to disassemble to get to it. It's entirely up to you, but uh, there you go. So that screw is now in. So now we're going to put this strip in. So it goes in to there, snaps down. So then you've got two black screws that go in one into here. And one. In. Two. Here. Turn that around a bit. Into there. Just at the end of the strip. Okay. So. And that. Is pretty much. That. That's the printer all put back together now. So what we need to do next. Is. Take our. Tube part we've connected up into here. Make sure that's seated properly. And then we just connect our connected end onto the valve like so. That has to live at the side of the printer like so. It has to be on the same level um, so as to stop a siphoning effect or basically a, a flow back effect. And then the only other thing to remind, remember to do is make sure that this clamp here is open. So make sure it's not clamping the tube shut and that's it. That is a printer pot installation on an Epsom XP 950. Um, also compatible with the 900 and the 960 models. In case this all looks a little bit complicated and you're a bit concerned about cutting the tube and everything like that, we also have a instruction guide and a printer pad set that allows you to replace the waste ink pads instead of fitting in an external tank. 
So if you're interested in that, check our YouTube channel for our video on that. And also look for our XP4 printer pads products. Those are available. They are simpler, but this may well suit somebody that has a continuous ink system and they don't want to keep moving the printer around and changing pads all the time. Any questions, please let us know. And any feedback, obviously, more than welcome. Thanks very much and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.